Good morning. Happy St. Patrick's Day. This is a green shirt, even though it may not look like that. Uh, thank you for joining us. My name is Rick Hunsaker. I'm the Executive Director here at Region 12 Council of Governments, and we are headquartered in Carroll. Uh, with me this morning is Lauren Mortensen. She's our Economic Development Planner, and she is really the one who's been responsible for setting up and managing this entire series, and eventually will uh, be the one that will be getting these out on the website. Also with us is Chris Whitaker, our local assistance director. He has also put a lot of time and effort and thought into uh, this series. Please note that we will mute each of the attendees to limit background noise. This session will be recorded for later use and viewing and it will show up in the series on our website. This webinar those before it and those to come are made possible through special CARES Act funding provided to Region 12 COG by the U.S. Department of Commerce Economic Development Administration. Thank you also to our partners at the county economic development organizations in our region, Audubon County Economic Development, Carroll Area Development Corporation, the Chamber and Development Council of Crawford County, Green County Development Corporation, Midwest Partnership, and SAC Economic and Tourism Development for their work in promoting this event and assisting in developing the series of topics. Our next webinar will be, Do You Know Who Your Customers Are? That will be next Wednesday, March 24th, also at 7.30 a.m. I'm pleased to introduce our presenter this morning. Darcy Swan is a business counselor with the North Central Iowa SBDC and owner of In Tandem Marketing, where she focuses on working with rural small business owners. She has over 30 years of marketing experience and has developed expertise in branding, social media, website development, and public relations, among other things. Also joining us is Michael Mittler from the Iowa Western SBDC. As an entrepreneurial executive, Michael has over 25 years of experience leading, developing, and managing growth. Welcome, Darcy. Welcome, Michael. The floor mm -hmm. is now yours. Awesome. Thank you very much. And last week's webinar must have been so good that you guys want to repeat it again. But we're not going to do that today. We're actually going to talk about Google and digital marketing <laughs> tools um, that are uh, available to small business owners. And one of the things um, that Michael and I see, uh, one of the things that Michael and I see a lot at the center when folks come in and are requesting assistance is they don't realize how many resources are available to them for little or no cost. And a little plug for SBDC, for those that aren't aware, we are federally funded through grant dollars. And so all of our services to our clients are at no cost. Um, so, you know, we're out there uh, with expertise in certain areas and then have a large network of folks that we can bring in that have more extensive um, knowledge in different fields. Michael and I tend to kind of gravitate towards the marketing side, but we have financial experts, HR experts. Uh, we work with businesses from concept to um, succession planning. And right now I have on my plate, I have about Let's see, I have one client who's starting a business. I have one that is in the middle of um, just trying to get some help with their business. We've got a couple that are growing and I've got one that is looking to sell his business. So we deal with all sorts of things and that's not uncommon. Um, if you do have questions today on the content that I'm gonna share, I'm sharing it a very high overview, feel free to reach out to our center. If you're not currently a client, we ask that you go out to the iowasbdc.org website that um, email or that domain is at the bottom of all the slides that you'll see this morning um, and request counseling from the Fort Dodge office. That's where your region office is located. And either Michael or I will get back with you to work with you specifically on your business to help answer those questions. Also, um, we are a Google partner and we're very proud of that partnership. And um, we have a wide range of Google workshops that we can present. Today, we're gonna talk about their small business digital toolkit, but we also have um, workshops that can um, help you understand in more detail how to claim your business, how to manage your business remotely, um, analytics, 
um, how to create step-by-step -step tutorials and a lot of other um, really good content. So if you're interested in learning more about any of that, also let us know. Um, and also, if you haven't been on one of our, our workshops yet, um, this series, Michael and I are very informal presenters. We like to chat and get feedback. So we ask that if you have a question, feel free to drop it in the chat box. Michael's gonna be manning that for me. And then um, he'll also be chiming in with some comments here and there um, as well. And we'll just keep it a very casual conversation and hopefully get you some insight into some resources that will help you with your business. So I'm gonna go ahead, hopefully this will work and share my screen. Let's see. I hope. Uh, I have way too many things open this morning on my screen, so I apologize. Um, let's see here. Screen. Okay. Go. All right, can you guys see my screen? I can't see you, so somebody yes, would just- we can okay. see your screen. Awesome, thank you. <laughs> All right, we are ready to rock and roll. Okay, so this morning we're gonna talk about the various um, tools that Google provides to small businesses, and they do that through what they call the um, Small Business Digital Toolkit. And um, everything but two of the items I'm gonna talk about are free. And so we're going to talk about um, claiming your business and, and why that is so important. And really, that's the first step to utilizing any of the um, tools that Google provides. We're going to chunk up the rest of what I want to talk about into three categories. We're going to talk about Discover, which are really cool tools to help you discover insight and, and gain information to strengthen your business. We're also going to talk about improving your business with a couple of, of really cool little tools that Google provides um, by generating some reports back to you to help you strengthen your online presence. And then we're going to talk uh, briefly about promoting your business utilizing some Google tools. So the first thing um, before you do anything with Google is you really need to claim your business um, with Google. And I would think that most of you probably have. But if you have not, I'm just going to touch on a few things today. Um, but if you need um, instruction on how to do that, maybe you're a little uncomfortable utilizing the computer, um, reach out because we do a lot of one on one counseling and getting businesses online. So reach out to us. Um, but it's important to understand why you need to be um, uh, claim your business on Google. And the first thing is it really adds an extra level of trust to your business. It adds that extra layer of exposure and it makes it easier to find you. Um, and if you're on a Google listing uh, with Google's brand trust, that automatically raises your trust. Um, and think about it too, that 88% of consumer um, searches for local businesses are on a mobile device and they call that business within 24 hours. So if you're not out being listed and visible, you're gonna get passed over. Um, and 97% of customers searched online to find a local business. So again, it's a really good reason to have your business um, listed. It helps increase your SEO rankings. And for those that don't know, SEO stands for Search Engine Optimization. So it's a great way to um, get links back to your site and it helps move you up higher in the rankings. So you really wanna to try to be on that first page when someone's searching, maybe you're a bakery and someone's looking for you know, birthday cakes or something like that. When they type it in, you really wanna get your, um, rank or your listing as high up on that list as possible because most people aren't going to go through pages and pages to try and find you. They're gonna take one of the first few that appear um, on their search results. It also is, um, it provides you with some free advertising and prime Google locations. Um, there are billions of searches done daily um, and having your name toward the top is really important. We're gonna talk about um, a way that you can also increase that by paying a little bit with Google ads. And we'll be talking about that later uh, this morning. 
Um, it also allows you to reach new customers through local searches. And keep in mind that not all of your customers live in your community. There may be folks who are coming in for a weekend um, and they want to get a birthday cake or an anniversary cake, or they're staying at your community overnight on their way to another destination and they're searching for restaurants or clothing stores or tire shops or things like that. So you wanna make sure that you're listed because you're gonna be missing a potential audience if you don't. And then the last reason why it's really important to claim your business on Google is it really helps funnel those online visitors back to your website and to your social accounts. And it also allows you to gather reviews. And we know in today's um, world, nobody's going to the yellow book, uh, yellow pages to find um, services. They, they're really, they're going out, they're Googling and they're reading reviews and they're talking to friends and they're utilizing social media. So you want to make sure that you have a presence. You know, businesses really cannot afford not to be on Google because it really, at the end of the day, helps you create a relationship with your audience and makes it easy to do business um, with you. So we're talking about claiming your business and you're like, okay, what does she mean by that? So I went out and just took a snapshot of what a, a verified account, this is a business that has claimed um, their business. And this is what the consumer would see or the online visitor would see. So um, this happens to be a home decor and customer furniture shop in um, Phoenix, Arizona and Peoria. Um, so you, what this does is it gives you short links to the website. If I happen to pull them up and I want directions, um, I can click directions and it'll pull right up into my phone. I can call them right off of their listing. It gives me store hours. And you as the owner of the account have access to changing and owning all of this information. So it's important that you know your phone number is right, your address is right. Um, there will be photos of the outside of your store. It is so critical. Um, that those photos are there. And we talked about that in a previous website um, workshop. A lot of folks will drive right by a business if they can't see the numbers, they're not really sure. But if you show them what the outside of the building looks like, it makes it much easier for them to, to find you and have kind of it lowers that trepidation of walking into a foreign space as well. So um, these photos though, Google provides, there is a way that you can go out and add your own. It's a little difficult, but we can get you instructions on how to do that. Um, but typically this is when Google drives by with the car, with the camera, they take the picture. Um, so if you don't like your picture, you really don't like your picture, we can work with you. Um, otherwise, they don't really give a time as to how often they drive by. I have a client in, um, one of the communities I work with and they had a ripped awning and they wanted that off and it was gonna be a little difficult for them. So they were waiting for Google to drive by and take another picture. So um, it also allows you to list some of the products that you um, sell and it allows people to ask questions. It um, pulls in your reviews from Facebook um, it also allows for people to add a review um, right here. So if someone was wanting to know, is this a really good store? Oh, they got a five out of five on Facebook for reviews. They got 4.6 stars based off of the Google reviews. Here's some of the comments. They've added now the popular times. So you can see, well, if I'm gonna go to this store, they might be a little busy over noon to, to like two o'clock. So maybe I'll go around three when it's not quite so busy. Um, oops. And then I just did that. Okay. They also um, allows you to um, uh, enter photos of the different products that you sell. You could do video tours. You can even add coupons specific to Google. So when someone comes in with that, you know they found you on Google. And that's a really good way to test how the, um, the Google uh, listing is working. This little check here shows that this account is verified. It means that the owners have taken it and claimed it. And so they're the only ones who can go in and change the content. And it provides quick links to their social media. So this is why it's so important because when you don't have um, an opportunity to get in front of a client or a potential client, your Google listing can help do the job to get them to at least take that next step. And it's really easy to do. And I've got a short video just to show you how easy it's going to kind of go by quick so that the intent isn't for you to jot down how to do it the intent is for you to see 
how quick you can get your business claimed and the information they need. So hopefully the speakers will work and you can hear this. In this video, we'll show you how to add a business on Google My Business for free. First, in a web browser, visit google.com slash business. Sign into your Google account or create a new one. Be sure to sign into the account that you want to use for your business. Then click next. Enter the name of your business or chain. You can also click your business name from the list of suggestions that appear as you type. You'll be asked to confirm your business name and choose a business category. Click next. The order of the following steps may vary depending on which type of business you're adding. Enter your business or chain address. If your business doesn't have a physical location, but works in a service area, you can list the city or town instead. Enter your business mailing address. You can select your service area in the next step. Click next. Now, you can let customers know the area you serve. If you only serve customers out of a single physical location, click, no I don't. Then click next. If your business serves or delivers in more than one location, click, yes, I also serve them outside my location. Then click next. Enter your service areas. Then click next. Add the phone number you want to connect to your business. This number can be changed at any time. Now, you can add your business website URL. This site will be included in your business profile. Click next. You're almost done. Now, click finish. To be able to fully manage your new business profile, you'll need to confirm it's yours. You can choose how you'd like to verify your business from the options shown on your screen. You're all done. Now, you can promote your business, track business analytics, and gather customer reviews. To learn more about how to manage your business profile, visit the Google My Business Help Center. Perfect. So it's a really simple process. Um, and like I said, we can help walk you through it. We do a lot of one-on-ones. Um, Michael, do you have anything you want to add to claiming your business on Google? Yeah, a couple things that I would add. When you claim your business to a lot of people who are not, like say, for example, you have a, a, a company that's run out of your home and they're a little nervous about putting that address in there. Um, you still have to put in a physical address, a mailing address. Um, that's the way they verify you. But you can turn that off so the world can't see that. So I always make people aware of that. The other thing that I'm finding too is make sure you update your hours when you're not open. <laughs> yeah, <very good>. yeah. <laughs> and they give you the opportunity to, um, like they ask you for the entire year, they've already asked for the bit, one of the businesses I own, but the entire year they've asked me, what are my hours during the holidays? What are those kind of things? So I can put them in there and don't have to, I can forget it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, after I put it in there for the year. But please, I mean, make sure you do that because a lot of people will have a call and say, hey, your hours said this and you were that. Um, so I would say make sure you update those or keep those things up to date. And I think COVID or uh, with COVID, they also were sending out emails saying, um, do you have any specific information related to COVID um, mm -hmm. operation changes? They also send emails out if you forget um, to change like during the holidays, maybe you're open longer. So they do a really good job of notifying um, those businesses that are claimed to see if there are any changes relative to maybe to the season, those kinds of things. And you can just click no and go on your way or, oh geez, yeah, I need to go out and I'm gonna be open more with the holidays coming up, that kind of thing. Or we're not open right now, we're doing curbside pickup and that can be reflected on there. So the claiming your business on there is on Google is just a really solid business decision and it costs you absolutely nothing to do it. Yeah. So. I, I will say that um, one of the other things that I recommend that people do is um, upload pictures and upload them. I don't want to say often, but don't just upload them one time and not go back. Um, Google likes to see that you're using the Google business page features. So they like to see you updating those. I have a system where it's like, okay, I upload a picture. And as soon as, as soon as that picture gets over a hundred likes or views or whatever, then I upload another picture. Um, I just kind of, that's just kind of my rhythm to doing it. Everybody could do it a little bit differently, but they like to see that. And I, and I believe personally that that also 
kind of boost you in the ranking because you're being active on that Google business page. So when people do searches, it boosts us up to the top, especially if they're searching, um, like they're in an area, a, ge a geographical area close to the shop. I noticed that we get put at the top of the list mm -hmm. because of that, um, because of keeping active, so. And that's a great uh, comment, Michael, regardless if it's a uh, Google listing or your website or social media, you need to keep it going if you have started it. Because um, if you're not out there, there's a, you know, the online visitor is going to lose trust if they see that the site hasn't been updated in a long time. Um, it does pull you down on the um, search rankings um, if your site, you know, hasn't been updated um, or what have you. So that it's a really good uh, piece of advice there. So all right, so if you have problems or you're not really sure what we just did, uh, reach out and let us know because we're here to help you get yourself listed. And we do a lot of reviews to um, kind of uh, uh, analysis so we can go out and look and say, well, you know, you really need to add some pictures, your time isn't updated, we can help you know how to strengthen the listing as well. All right, so um, that's what I wanted to share on claiming your business. In, in this video, Oops, we'll show you how to add a business on Google. Maps. There we go. All right, so now I want to talk about a few of the tools that they um, offer that will help you discover some insight um, and get you some additional information to strengthen your business. One of my favorites is Google Alerts. Um, it's basically you, you create an email alert. So every time that your business or whatever words you type in, and I'll show you what the screen looks like here in a second, um, whenever they're mentioned online, you get an email and it tells you um, what was said, gives you a link back out. So it's really good to um, use these to follow what people are saying about you, about your competitors, Maybe it's about your industry. Um, it really helps kind of keep you on top of your game without you having to sit and be online. So um, there's a simple screen you go to and you can type in what you want your alert to be. Um, so these are just two of the alerts that I have. Um, one is my name. So anytime um, someone has my name out there, I get an email alert letting me know, kind of, sometimes good and not so good sometimes. <laughs> um, I'm also part of a nonprofit. Um, so I have a, a link out or a alert for any time that um, LiftWC is mentioned, I get that alert. Um, and you can go change them all the time. Um, so, you know, you could put competitor info, um, your business name um, and what have you in there and it will um, send you an alert. So kind of a cool little feature. Michael, do you use alerts at all? Not yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. It's kind of fun. Um, and it like is, I said, it, it, it's a great way to be able to track without spending the time doing it. Yeah. And it's a good way to find out too, like um, if you've done press releases and stuff like that, and you're not paying attention to whether the, the person in the press release actually put it out in the press, it's nice because it kind of bounces back at you in a couple of days after they've written an article about you that you may not know about. And you're like, hey, my press release actually works. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> sometimes you do wonder, you know, like, hey, do they, are they ever going to run that? Because sometimes you don't see them. And then other people will say, hey, I saw the article of you in the paper. And you're like, oh, they did run it. Okay, because I didn't ever saw it. So yeah, it's a, that's a good point. Um, another tool, um, and this is going to cover a wide range. So um, I think it's really important to get feedback from your customers. And so on a, uh, a no pay scale, you can create a document and send to your customers as a follow-up um, to gain insight into how their experience was with you. Did you enjoy shopping at our store? Did you enjoy the service we provided? You know, we all get those, right? Um, rank our service from one to five, five being, you know, excellent, that kind of thing. And you can do that through tools with Google. And you can also create custom surveys to give you um, market research. And you can go out and if you're looking maybe to expand into a different uh, product line, um, Google will allow you to go out and do these surveys and get some really valuable insights um, into that audience and your existing customers. Um, 
So there's a wide range of ways that you can utilize Google tools to get insight and market research to help you make better solid business decisions. So I didn't want to spend too much time on that, but I just wanted to let you know that those opportunities are there. Um, we use a, a modified version of a form for our SBDC clients um, to gain information on how their businesses are doing. Um, also, uh, we do everything we do is confidential unless we have a release from a client letting us be able to talk to you know, an economic developer or a banker or what have you. And so we have a form that we send them a link, they go out, they complete the form, they hit submit, and it comes into a database. So we use them here at the SBDC Center um, quite frequently. Um, and so there's a wide range depending on what you're trying to get. There are tools through Google to help you do that. Um, another um, neat tool, and this may not really apply to too many of you on the call, but I wanted you to be aware that uh, Google also looks at helping you grow and expand your business into new markets. So we're talking about um, you know, scaling a business that would maybe go national and international, um, that global uh, market. I did sit through a really interesting uh, workshop on this particular tool. Um, and, and what the tool does is it helps you discover like regional markets before you decide if you're ready to go global. Um, it gives you tailored recommendations and insights into your specific um, business channel. And it helps you take a look at the local markets that you're looking to go into. So maybe let's say you want to do business in, um, in uh, England, but you, you're not really sure of customs and what's the right payment forms, you know, what would be the best form of delivery that that market is um, expecting. And it will provide you all those insights as well. Um, and it's pretty easy. You just type in, I believe it's your, um, your domain. A lot of the stuff is driven from the domain and from your business listing when you claim your business. So um, another really cool free tool to get you some information on how to really take and expand your business into new markets. And if you're wanting more information on that too, you can let us know. All right, so now I wanna take just a couple of minutes and talk about a couple of tools to help you improve your online presence. And um, both of these are free um, and really easy to use. So the first one is test my site. So it will help you um, improve your mobile site um, to uh, really optimize it, to help you create a better customer experience. And um, it will give you tips and reviews on how to do a more seamless conversion. So you type in your domain and it will give you a quick um, feedback report. Now, this is the iOS BDC uh, website. It obviously needs improvement because um, the site's loading a little slow. Um, <laughs> but that this is what it will tell you. It will give you this basic information um, and will give you tips on how to um, improve your rating. What can you do to do better? And then um, if you're like this, the monthly trend, there's been no change, it will provide information on what you can do to increase that. Um, it also will give you recommendations and a custom report on how you can um, increase your speed to loading um, your website. So this one, uh, one of the little stats it's pulling specific for uh, the iowasbdc.org website is that you can improve your load time by 0.1 second and boost your conversion rates by 8%. So that kind of has my attention if I was a retailer and, hmm, okay, I kind of want to take a look at that. Um, it also would provide a customized report um, to things that you can do to create a better shopping experience. And then also um, how you can convert over uh, clients a little bit easier. And so you basically, again, type in your domain, it will send you a, re uh, a link to download a report specific to your business. It's kind of a fun little tool. Um, and then the other one I wanna um, call attention to is Grow My Store. And this is a, a great little tool to help you analyze your retail store and get, what you do is you, again, type in your domain and it will give you a score and recommendations on four different areas. So it'll look at site analysis, 
It'll tell you how your website stacks up against retailers in your sector. It'll give you practical recommendations to help you identify areas of improvement so you can upgrade your site effectively. It gives you tailored insights to um, access personalized market and consumer trends to reach new customers, uh, which I think is really interesting. I bet that we've seen a lot of trends shift over the course of the last year. Um, so, you know, really strengthening that online presence is going to be more vital now than ever, especially as we start to open up. Uh, people have gotten used to going online and ordering and then going and picking up or going online and ordering and having it delivered, um, especially a lot of the restaurants and such. So those tailored insights will be really interesting to see. And then the guidance and support. So they will um, give you advice on resources and tools that they have that would benefit your specific business based off of what they see your needs are. So those are some great free tools um, to help you improve your um, retail online. So Michael, do you have anything to add to that? Either of those two areas? Oh, I don't because I've never used them. Oh, really? <laughs> but now yes. I know something. <laughs> Yeah. Well, good. My job today is done. I feel good. <laughs> They're just really cool little tools. So yeah, you know, it's kind of fun just to get that analysis back. Um, and they're free, so that's even better. Um, and then the last area that I want to talk about is promoting your site utilizing Google. So Google has this really cool, and I don't know how many people know this, but they have a marketing kit. And it generates um, downloadable posters and social media posts. Um, it will take reviews and create these posts for you that you can then put on Facebook. Um, but again, it's all based off of the content from that business profile that we showed you at the very beginning. So it would take the reviews that Robin's Nest had and create these really cool um, um, graphic, digital graphic pieces. And the one you see here that says review us on Google, that is included in there. Um, you can also do custom where you can, um, you know, let's say your business is one that, um, you know, you're opening back up um, and you're, you are going to require people to wear masks. You could easily generate a sign here to say, hey, we're open. Um, business as usual, we just ask that you wear a mask to enter our store, mask required. So you can custom your, um, uh, your information. Also, um, as you can see on here too, uh, there's coupons that you can custom. So, hey, you know, we appreciate your support. We hope to see you again soon. Enjoy 20% off your next meal. So you can go do those. You can also, through this, uh, create videos. And um, as Michael said earlier, keeping your photos um, up to date will help create even more solid um, um, graphics because it'll pull from that listing and allow you to add music and customize and then you've got this really great little video that you can put out on social media and we all know that photos and videos have higher results on in social media than just copy alone so um so those are kind of some cool things with the little marketing uh kit so i don't know kind of fun um the posters are really fun i like it for reviews um, being able to, to take a review mm -hmm. and then share that on social media. It's kind of a, a nice visual way to share that. Have you used these, Michael? I have not. I have not. Well, guess what? I bet you will now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but th that's the thing. A lot of people don't know that these tools are even there. And, and it's not going to, you know, they're just ways to help you enhance and grow and strengthen your business that don't take a lot of time. Google does most of the work for you. So, but again, it's all driven off that um, business profile. All right. And the last thing, and please jump in on this one, um, uh, Michael, is Google Ads. And um, Google Ads are kind of, they remind me a lot of like Facebook ads where you're really in control of the spend and the reach. And we've all seen them, right? We go in and we search for something and at the very top of the listing or off to the side, you'll see um, a listing that will say ad. So those are paid for to have them show up in those locations. And there are um, some steps that you need to go through to set up these ads, similar in a way, I think, to like creating a Facebook ad. So first off, define your goal. And we talked about that, I think, in the first workshop that Michael and I did with websites. You know, you can't enter into anything without knowing what it is that you want to do. 
So when you're running these ads, are you looking to have people call you to, you know, book an appointment, schedule to have, you know, their oil changed or, or what have you, but define what you want that goal to be. Do you want them to come to your store? Do you want them to take action on your website? Uh, do you want to drive them to your retail store to purchase? Um, do you want them to sign up for a mailing list? Those kinds of things. So the first step to find your goal. Number two, decide where you want to advertise. So for your ad to perform well, it has to be um, resonating with the audience that sees it. So you need to be where they are. And that goes back to knowing your customer. Um, so the Google ads lets you choose the location your ad's going to appear within a certain radius of your store. It can um, cover an entire region or a country. And Michael mentioned just a minute ago that um, when he keeps his business profile active, he pulls up higher in those search rankings um, when people are looking for his business in that area. And that's true with the businesses. Um, a lot of the, the clients in my marketing business, I don't do Google ads for because they're gonna pull up at the top anyway, just because of the geographic location. But some businesses have a greater reach. They may not just be targeting you know, the Carroll and, and 30 minute radius from there that may be the whole state of Iowa or it could be the Midwest. And so those were the folks where Google ads really come into play because you can pick those markets um, that you are in and make sure that you're pulling up higher on those um, uh, search rankings. Um, also, it, they allow you to create your message. So you can write ad copy, you can put in an image, they review it, they tell you if it's approved or if you need to make any changes. They'll also help um, give you some um, tools or information to strengthen your ad, which is nice. Um, it, they also allow you to set your budget cap. So same thing with Facebook, you can say how much you wanna spend and the length of time that you want to run your ad. Um, but I will recommend that with the Google ads that you leave it up for at least a month because you'll probably start seeing traction after about three weeks. And you wanna make sure that you're not just putting it out there and then taking it down and going, well, that didn't work. Well, you need to leave it up and it's that whole consistency thing. So if you're gonna do it, I would do it for a minimum of a month. I would expand it even a little longer um, based off your budget. And then the last step is actually going live. So your ad's gonna appear when people search for products or services um, that you offer. And it'll appear on Google searches and maps and across other Google partner um, sites. And then the last thing I wanna mention on Google ads is that you pay for the results. So even though your ad may be up, if no one's clicking on it, um, you know, again, it goes back to defining the goals. No one's visiting your website or getting directions to your store. Um, you're not charged for, um, for that ad. So um, something else to take a look at, this is one of those uh, Google features that do cost. But again, you're in control of that budget. So you're not gonna, you know, have an unexpected $2,000 bill show up. You can say, well, I wanna do, you know, uh, $300 over the course of the next, you know, two and a half, three months, that kind of thing. So Michael, do you have input for us on Google Ads? Cause I know you've worked with these yeah. before. They do a good job of um, when you start putting in your text that you want and your images, you can go back and see after you've run the ads for a while, what images have the best results, what text, because you're gonna put in several texts so they can run several different types of ads so you're, you're not seeing the exact same ad every time, which text actually work the best and have the highest rates of return for you. So they do a good job of that. Um, I will caution you and to tell you that if you're going to set up Google Ads and Google Analytics, please use the same email address for both. <laughs> I have. <laughs> I have them in two separate email addresses and Google Analytics always doesn't show me the exact number of people that visit my site, site where the ads do show me a bigger click rate. And I'm like, well, these aren't even jiving. And partially it's because they're on two separate accounts. Um, and so it kind of creates problem, but that's one of the things I would definitely do. Um, mm -hmm. I like it because you can turn it off and turn it on. Um, so when you're, when if, if you, if you, have a budget set for $1,000, you can turn it off, you know, at that $1,000, or you can turn it off by a specific date. Um, but 
but I do recommend that people do this consistently. So if you're going to run it for two to three weeks the, um, every month, then run it for two to three, three weeks every month. Um, and we just set a goal and a budget. We say, this is how much we're going to spend on these Google AdWords. Much easier to track the ads in Google and Facebook than it is a newspaper ad that costs twice as much. So Good point. It's a better value for your dollar, I can tell you that. Yeah. Well, the analytics alone are, are huge. You know, you don't know what's going on if you don't have the data. You know, so I love going out and looking at, at the Facebook analytics and then the analytics on the websites, too, to see where are people going? What are they looking at? What's resonating with them? Yeah. You know, um, and so I, I, I love the analytic piece of, of what Google provides, too. It's, it's huge. Yeah. And, and we're going to answer a question because there's a question here that says, what um, are the um, best ways for the business to know that you gained you know, you made money off of that particular ad. Google does a really good job of when they're running an ad word um, and you hook it to your analytics, telling what your conversion rate is. So there's a little bit of technology that's behind this. So you have to do some things like, um, you have to make sure that you put a tag on the page where people go to purchase. Um, so you have to kind of know how to do that. Um, I can help you do it if it's on Wix. Some some of the other ones I'm not familiar, like WordPress, I wouldn't know how to do it, but um, you put that tag in there and every time somebody clicks and purchases and goes through the process of um, checking out on your website, it actually tracks the amount of the purchase and puts it on Google Analytics and tells you, and it tells you what your conversions rates have been for those particular things. Now, if every single page, um, unfortunately, in some of these um, um, website builder apps, um, it's not capturing the data on all of those pages as cleanly as it could be or should be doing. Um, I haven't figured out how to fix it, but sometimes what will happen is people will go to, um, like, for example, we have a shipping page and then we also have an in-store come in and pick it up page. So they have to go to one of the two. And sometimes it doesn't pick up um, the in-store um, ones. And so I don't know if people, you know, I can go on and tell that somebody purchased it, but I can't tell if it came from Google or not. So sometimes that those numbers might not jive completely with what's going on, but it, it it's kind of slick. Yeah. I actually see it. <laughs> like, oh, that, that worked. It was worth my <laughs> hundred bucks. <laughs> yeah. All of the um, tools uh, that we talked about today um, and more are, um, if you go out to smallbusiness.withgoogle.com, you can um, look through um, that particular website and, um, you know, learn more about them. And then if you have specific questions, um, feel free to reach out to, um, Michael or myself. Um, and there is our contact information. Um, so we'll open it up right now for, um, any more questions. Um, I really just wanted to spend some time this morning about all of the, the free and very cost-effective um, uh, tools that are available that I don't think a lot of business owners know. And I think, you know, even just like if you start doing alerts, I mean, you're one step ahead of where you were yesterday, right? And so um, these tools, you don't have to jump in and do them all, um, but just know that they're there. So when you need help on a certain area, you know what's available to you, so. Darcy, I'll start. Um, yeah. Last week I had gone to a funeral in Kansas City and so I needed to order flowers and I know that I can go to 1-800-Flowers and, and there's yep. different online ways but I know that but you know personally I thought I don't want to have this local store pay these fees if there's anything there so I google flower shops in this particular town and I find one that appears to be a local shop and that's how I how I ordered the flowers and I let the owner of that business know that's how I found them and, and awesome. what my purpose was and I know that it works well for that maybe if I need a plumber I might google plumber Carol Iowa and that would come up are there businesses that this really isn't as effective for, uh, or is this something that can apply to all small businesses? I can't think of anything that it wouldn't apply to. I mean, Michael, do you, I think you, when you claim, you think if you're, 
profile, you, you know, I don't think you're going to get a lot of traffic if you are a large manufacturing plant, yeah. because that's a whole different kind of say. network. I think, you know, small business, main street businesses, um, local, those retail, kinds of, yeah. Yeah, local retailers, I think this um, would be a really good fit. Not that all businesses can't be out there, but I think it's really geared towards more the, the small, like your example is perfect, Rick, about, you know, finding the flower shop and letting that owner know. And, you know, another way too to track that is if that owner would have had a coupon out there that you would have used, you know, then they would know specifically that it came from Google without maybe you having to have said it. But I'm glad you did tell them that because that's important for those business owners to hear that that is working, that that's how you found them. Yeah. Go ahead, Michael. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think manufacturing would be one of those that would that would yeah. help because it's a totally different beast. But I think definitely any local retailer, um, you know, any of those things that are that, that are by local, I think is a really good one. Mm -hmm. You know, any of those kind of businesses are actually going to going to help. Gonna, this is going to help them. Mm -hmm. And I know that when I when I had Googled this shop, they came up, they were maybe number two or three on the mm -hmm. list. And and then there's the whole drop down menu. So like yeah. you were talking about, there's page two, there's page three, people are yeah. going through and look for that. Mm -hmm. If I'm a small business owner that has services, how can I make sure I'm number one or number two or number three? What do I, what sort of account management do I need to do to make sure I'm showing up at the top of those lists? I'm going to say you need, I'm going to say the more activity you have on your Google business page, the, the better reviews you're getting. Um, if you can get your customers to give reviews, I think maybe those survey tools let you do that. If I'm correct. Like you can send out an email after somebody's gone and they say, revout, view us on Google. The more those kind of rankings are in there, um, the more, the, the better your SEO is on your website. It's not a, I think sometimes people think this um, SEO and these kind of things are a one and done thing. Like you do them once and then you never go revisit them, but you really actually have to go do that fairly often because Google wants to see you doing that. Um, and that those kind of things are what pulls you further up on the, the list. Sometimes it's not just that, it's just the proximity of where that mobile person is at. So for example, I'm sure that anybody who comes to um, downtown Omaha, when they pull up desserts, we pop up as one of the first places because there's not very many people in that, there's not that many people in that region or in that area that are doing the same thing. So some of it is a mobile thing, um, but that's what you want when you're, you know, when you're in an area where there's tourists or travelers, you definitely want your name to be at that top of that list. And, and that's why I commented too about Google ads aren't the right fit for everybody. I mean, if you aren't looking to really expand and you're looking, you know, your market reach, you're going to pull up because of the proximity to where the person is when they Google you. So mm -hmm. the ads may not be the right fit. It, it, to me, they're kind of more if you're kind of breaking out. Also, there's things that you can do to your website to enhance it, to get it to pull up higher too. And, and using, um, you know, uh, going in on each of the pages and adding your, um, my mind just completely Excellent. went blank, thank you. Um, you know, tagging your pages and things like that with those keywords um, and the way the copy is written on the website, all of those things help pull you up higher too. But, but Google is, you know, a really great place to start with trying to pull yourself up by just utilizing some of their tools and keeping active. And that's the key thing is make sure keep that active. you're keeping it active because when the spiders are out looking at the sites, if they notice a website hasn't been touched in a long time, it's not going to pull up the algorithms and they change almost daily, the algorithms. So I don't even try to keep up with them anymore. <laughs> it's too difficult, mm -hmm. but there are things. So that's a really good question, Rick. I mean, what can you do to, to keep up there? And I think, Michael, you nailed it. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll shut up and I'll let anyone. No, those else are great questions. To uh, unmute themselves and ask their question. Yeah. Does anyone yes. have any questions? Please ask. It is kind of, you know, I think sometimes we think it's a full-time job, but I always say there's a little method to your madness. And if you, like, you know, I, I just come up with the hundred people like our 
picture, then I add another one so that I have some method to my madness so that there's some consistency in how you're doing these things. Even if it's just going in once a month and doing it, there's some consistency there. And so as long as you're continually doing that consistency, it's going to help you with your ratings. It's going to help you get found more. And that's the key to doing some of this stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, and your photos on your, your Google listing don't have to be all product either. Yeah, it could be the inside of your store. Um, there's been research that has shown that people are hesitant to go into a uh, store for the first time if they don't know the lay of the land. You know, so when they walk in, there's some people who that's like a huge anxiety thing for them. But if they see the photo and they know when I walk in the door, oh, this is what it's going to look like, it makes that first trip a more enjoyable experience for them. Yeah. So I would include, you know, store kind of layouts, even if you're changing up your set um, displays and things like that, but give them kind of a flavor for what they can expect. Um, we talked about the outside photo. I don't really have control over that one, but, um, you know, there are other things that you can add videos. You could do a little video welcome, you know, hey, welcome to Robin's Nest. I, I'm glad that you stopped by. I hope that we'll see you in the store and that we can Help you with your custom furniture and your home decor needs and you know kind of talk about your services and, and that kind of thing so there's a lot of opportunity and it's really about customizing it and making your own so that your customers have that really good experience because at the end of the day you want to be top of mind and um, this is just one tool in your toolbox to help you do that and as a customer this is another i i can tell you that pictures have helped when I have done searches, because you go places and cities you're not familiar with, the business may be on the second floor, maybe inside mm -hmm. of another business, like an yeah. interior mall, it may be around the corner. So uh, I think having those pictures of what the entrance looks like will help people find rather than just give up and say, I'm, I'll go next door, I'll, I'll drive to this other one that's a few blocks away. Mm -hmm. I just the other day was in downtown Fort Dodge, and I was going to call on a, a business that had just, um, I had heard that they had opened. I drove by probably five or six times and could not find the location. I ended up calling the gal and she's like, oh, no, we're not open just yet almost. Our windows are still boarded. So it was the boarded up windows <laughs> that I was driving by. I didn't realize that was her store. But if I would have had a photo um, as a, you know, I would have known that that was her store. I, granted, she wasn't open. I know that. But um, those those photos are very valuable to helping you go, yep, I'm at the right spot. So yeah. fantastic. All right. Well, I'm sure you guys have questions, but um, sometimes it's hard to ask them in this forum, especially if it's specific to your business. So feel free um, to reach out to myself or to Michael. Again, our information was on that last slide, but also Lauren has it, Rick has our contact information, Chris has it as well. Um, and they would be happy to, to give our email and, and forward you on to us. And we're here to help. And so we would love to be able to work with you. And, and even if it's a simple question, that's what we're here for. So, um, and as Rick mentioned in his um, introduction this morning, next week, Michael and I are going to tag team it again. And we're going to talk about knowing where your customers are. So um, we're going to dive into really understanding who your customer is and what social media platforms they utilize so that you can develop a solid social media plan. And um, so it should be a really fun kind of customer focused morning. So, and I'm gonna have two cups of coffee before <laughs> I need it next week. <laughs> Needed it. <laughs> so I thank you guys all for your time. And thank you, Michael, for uh, joining oh, me again this guys. week. And, Rick and Chris and Lauren, thank you for asking us to join um, your organization for this workshop series. And we'll see you guys next Wednesday morning at 7.30, bright and early. So thank you, Darcy. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Michael. Bye. You're welcome. Have a good day, guys. <laughs> see you later. See everybody next week.